What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at operators in Go. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at operators in Go. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. And a special thanks to everybody who grabbed my new Python book at Amazon over the weekend. You guys shot it up to the number one hot new release in the Python category. So thank you for that. If you haven't checked it out, head over to Amazon, type in Elder Python or something like that. It should pop right up and give it a look. All right. Like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at operators in Go. And operators in Go are very simple. They're very, very similar to every operator in every other programming language. And we're gonna look at them today. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Go videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic starter code that we've always got, and I'm just calling this operators.go. So we're gonna look at the different operators. They're basically math, assignment, and comparison operators. And likely if you have any experience with any other programming language, this is gonna be very, very familiar to you. They're almost exact as almost all other programming languages. The only little difference is exponents. We're gonna to have to tweak it a bit to use exponents because Go doesn't have an exponent operator, but uh, very, very simple and straightforward. So let's start with math. And these operators are gonna be exactly as you would expect them to be. So let's come down here and let's just play around a little bit here. Let's say uh, 10 plus five. And to do that, we just call 10 plus five. We use the math addition operator, right? So very, very simple. So I'm just gonna bang out a few of these real quick. And so we can also go 10 minus five. And as you would expect, 10 minus five, right? So super simple. We could do multiplication 10 times five. We can do division, which is the forward slash. And we can also do modulus. Modulus, if you're not familiar, returns a remainder. So 10 divided by five, is two with zero left over, zero remainder. So this will return zero. So those are the basic operators. And let's just run this really quick just to make sure I didn't mess that up. Head over to our terminal. I'm in my C Go stuff directory. And let's run go run operators.go. And oh, we've got a horrible angry error because up here I forgot to import FMT. There we go. All right. So let's try this again. Clear the screen. So we have 10 plus five equals 15, 10 minus five equals five, 10 times five equals 50, 10 divided by five equals two, and 10 modulus five is zero because there's no remainder. So very simple, exactly as you would expect. Now exponents is a little bit different. So like I said earlier, Go doesn't have an exponent operator. That can be true often for your C type languages. So not that bad, we just need to import the math library. So let's come up here and import math. And now we can use that. So let's create some variables. I'm just gonna call a base variable and our exponent variable. And these are gonna be what? Let's say float 64, they could be integers, whatever you want. So let's set our base equal to two and let's set our exponent equal to three, right? So to do this, let's fmt.println and let's say two to the third power, right? So to do that, we call our math library. And we want to use the POW function, P-O-W, capital P-O-W stands for power. A lot of times exponents are to the power of, you know, two to the power of POW, right? And here you just enter in whatever your base is and then whatever your exponent is. And that's what these variables I've defined here. So two to the third power, this would be two to the third power, right? Super simple. Go ahead and save this. Head back over here, run the sky. And boom, two to the third power is eight. So that's two times two times two. So two times two is four times two is eight, right? Two to the third power. So super simple. So the only other thing to deal with is increment and decrement. And those are sort of mathy type things. So let's just uh, create a, a variable. And I'm just gonna do it like this. And let's say 10. Now we could take num plus plus. This will add one to our num variable. So if we wanna just sort of really quickly copy and paste this, and let's say 10 plus one. Here we just wanna print out num. And we could do the same thing with let's say num two. Let's set that equal to 10 and we can go num minus minus, right? So we could just copy this. So 10 plus two is now gonna be 10 minus two. And this will be num two and that will be num two. Okay. So increment and decrement, very useful, especially with like loops and things like that. Anytime you need a counter, you're gonna use an increment and a decrement operator. 
So you could see 10 plus one equals 11, 10 minus one equals nine. So super simple. So those are our math operators. Very, very straightforward. Of course they are, right? So now let's look at assignment operators. And we've already actually been using assignment operators like this guy and this guy. We're assigning the number three to this variable. That's an assignment operator. So of course, your equal to sign is the most popular one, the most familiar one. We can also use our math operators with the equal to. So we can add and assign, we can subtract and assign, we can multiply and assign, and we can divide and assign. So let's just knock out one of these real quick because they all act the same. I'm gonna create a variable called my num and let's set that equal to 10. So here we could go my num plus equals five, right? So that's gonna take whatever's in there, which is 10, add five to it, reassign it back. So here, let me just copy this real quick. And let's say 10 plus five equals my num, right? So this would be the same if we went minus num, they would subtract. If we went multiply num, it would multiply, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just gonna leave it at plus, save this, run it, make sure that works. I suspect it will. <laughs> and we have 10 plus five equals 15, as we would expect. Okay, so those are assignment operators, very, very simple. And you know, you're gonna use those always, especially just the basic equal to. Now we wanna look at comparison operators. And we use these when we deal with logic, if else statements, right? So these do exactly what they say, compare two or more things. So we have a single equal to sign when we assign. When we compare, we use double equal to signs. That's the same in almost every programming language. They all do that. So equal equal, probably very familiar. Not equal is exclamation equal. A lot of times in programming language, an exclamation point is shorthand for not, right? No, very exclaimy, no, right? So that is not equal. Then we've got our basic greater than, less than, greater than and equal to, or less than or equal to. So you understand how to use these probably. You've seen them a zillion times. So we can, let's just grab this guy here. And let's say what, five equals five. And here we can run five equals five. Let me just knock out a few of these here. Here we can say five not equal five. Let's change it to six. Five is not equal to six. That will return true. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, but comparison operators will always return either true or false. We're comparing and we do that by returning a Boolean true or false, right? So let's see, what else we got? We've got, let's say greater than six. So let's say six. We can say is five less than six. Five less than six. And we've also got, let's see, greater than or equal to six. So greater than or equal to six. And we've also got less than or equal to six. And here is less than or equal to six. So if we save this and run it, give this a look-see. We see down here, five equals five, that's true. Five does not equal six, yeah, that's true, <laughs> right? Five is greater than six, well, that's false. Five is not greater than six. Five is less than six, uh-oh, that's false. What did we do there? We messed something up. Uh, five is less than six, I forgot to change that to that. All right, see, when we run these things, let's run this again. All right, so five less than six, that is true now. Five is greater than or equal to six, that's false. Five is less than or equal to six, that's true. So those are your comparison operators, very straightforward. And like I said, this is the same in almost every programming language, this is too. Basically all of these are, except for the math guy here, that's a little bit different. But like I said, a lot of C type programming languages use an outside library to deal with exponents, so that's not all that weird since Go is very similar to C, in a lot of different ways, or C languages, I should say, in a lot of different ways, and pretty straightforward. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.